evening, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the May 7th, 2018 Board of Education meeting. Can we have a roll call, please? Here. 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 Thank you. The first item on the agenda is written communication. Any written communication, Dr. Bayless? There are no written communications at this time. Okay, thank you. The next item is student recognition. Um, Dr. Witherspoon, you want to lead us? Whoa, do we have some recognition tonight. State and national honorees. And uh, I'm going to invite uh, the advisor as well as a member of our faculty, Jenny Weber, up. And she is going to describe the accomplishments of these young people. And I think you're going to really enjoy this. And Jenny, you might want to go up to the uh, uh, podium there, yeah. Sure, you hold on to those medals. They're making a <laughs> lot of noise. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. Jeez. Good evening. It is with great honor that I am able to stand here before you to recognize these students who have dedicated so much of their own time in DECA. These students started working on their 30 page marketing research plans or 11-page business plans within the first two weeks of school starting. They dedicated their lunch periods, free periods, coming in to work on these projects. In addition, these students practiced their presentations with me starting as early as 7 a.m. in the morning and staying as late as 5.30 p.m. As you might know, DECA is a high school competitive business club where students can compete in a role play or written competition. This past February, 28 students attended the Illinois Career Development Conference in Rosemont that hosted over 1,300 high school students. I had the pleasure of working with 15 of those students individually on their 30-page marketing research papers or business plans in various categories. It is my pleasure to notify you that of those 15 students, all 15 placed not only in the top 10, but also in the top three. Whoa. <laughs> In addition, we had two students qualify in their team decision marketing event, earning themselves a spot to compete at the international level as well. These students earned the opportunity to compete at the international competition that hosted over 19,000 high school students from across the United States, as well as from other countries such as Mexico, Canada, Spain, China, and Germany in Atlanta, Georgia. Before recognizing these students, I would like to invite Josh and Nora to come give you a quick overview as to how DECA has benefited them. Hi. Uh, over the past couple of years while being in DECA, I have overcame my fear of public speaking. Before joining DECA, I was shy and just didn't care about joining any type of clubs. Before joining this amazing club, has changed that. I met people who I thought I would never be friends with, learned more about responsibility, and have been places I've never been before. Attending the international conference my junior year made me want to pursue running for Illinois DECA state officer in the fall. When I told Ms. Weber that I, what I wanted to do, we were both excited about it. Unfortunately, I didn't get elected to be an officer, but I had made long, long, long friendships with the current state officers. DECA has inspired me to pursue a career in business, and eventually become a state representative or even president of the United States. DECA wants me to succeed in the future because they have given me the opportunity of allowing to receive a $1,000 scholarship to help pay for my post-secondary education. I will be attending the University of Illinois Springfield with a double major in business administration and legal studies. I will be continuing my DECA career by starting a collegiate DECA chapter while in college. I wouldn't be able to do all this if it wasn't for my DECA advisors, Mr. Manila, Mr. Feely, and the amazing Ms. Weber. So um, for me, DECA is a lot more than just writing an essay and having a presentation. Um, this year I'm actually homeschooled and I take one class here at the school in order to do DECA. Um, when I decided to be homeschooled, there were a lot of things you know, I was worried that I'd miss out on, but for a lot of the things there are substitutions, but DECA is not one of them. Um, 
freshman year, I moved here from, from Sweden. I had never written an essay in my entire life, and I was terrified of public speaking. And I'd like to think that DECA really helped me become who I am today, where you know I'm talking in front of you guys, and <laughs> I made it to national on my essay skills. So thank you very much. So now it is my pleasure to recognize the following students and their accomplishments at the state competition as well as the international level. Jack Caldwell. Jack took, oh, yep, okay, there we go, okay, yep. Jack Caldwell took first place in his community service project focusing in on good news partners. Throughout his community service project, he spent hours on Saturday and during the week mentoring younger children and doing holiday activities with them. He helped organize the Thanksgiving dinner as well as the Christmas celebration. Jack also earned competency in his event at the national level, which means he scored at least an 80% in his oral presentation as well as his written component. Congratulations. <laughs> Next up, we have Michael Barrera. He took first place in his creative marketing project, focusing in on buzzed marketing and worked with local businesses to enhance their current marketing strategies. These local businesses included Bagel Art, Backlot Coffee, and Euro Revolution. Mikey also earned competency in his event at the national level, which means he scored at least an 80% in his oral presentation as well as in his written component. Congratulations. <laughs> Next, we have Ethan Eigenbohr and Nicholas Parafel. They scored second place in their franchise of business plan, focusing on purchasing franchise rights to Ignite Gaming Lounge. <laughs> Next, we have Nora Ferguson, who took first place in her franchise of business plan, focusing on purchasing franchising rights to Fitness Matrix. Nora also earned competency in her event at the international level, meaning she scored at least an 80% in her oral presentation as well as her written component. Congratulations. <laughs> Matt Ho and Jake Nagel scored first place in their hospitality and tourism operations research event, focusing in on Sea Ranch and how to enhance their current customer experience. It should be noted that Jake also placed in the top 10 in his entrepreneurship individual series role play at the state event. Both Matt and Jake also earned competency in their event, which means they scored at least an 80% in their oral presentation as well as their written component. <laughs> Next, we have Josh Rousey and Jean uh, Doralis. They scored second place in their hospitality and tourism operations research event, focusing in on Chick-fil-A and how to enhance their current customer experience. Josh and Jean also earned competency in their event at the national level, scoring at least an 80% in their oral presentation as well as their written component. <laughs> Next, we have Sophie Parafel. She took first place at the state level in the independent business plan, focusing in on opening up an Asian cuisine restaurant called Blossom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Margot Leviton took first place in her international business plan, focusing in on opening up an American taste restaurant in Ukraine, where she opened and closed speaking in Russian at the international Ooh. level. Margot also earned competency in her event at the national level, scoring at least an 80% in her oral presentation as well as her written component. <laughs> Next, we have Megan Bezaitis, who took first place in her public relations project, focusing in on creating awareness about hashtag women in STEM today. Megan also earned competency in her event at the international level, scoring at least an 80% on her oral as well as written component. <laughs> Jake Savitas and Zoe Savitas took first place in their sports and entertainment business operations. Yeah, that, that's fun, isn't that? <laughs> um, they took first place in their sports and entertainment business operations research event, focusing in on sky high sports and how to enhance their customer experience. 
Nate Gavilik took first place in his startup a business plan, focusing in on developing a business called Helpmates. <laughs> Olivia Holland and Georgia Wilson took sixth place in their travel and tourism team decision making event, role play. In competition, they were given a role play situation where they had 30 minutes to, de to develop a plan to solve the business's issue and 15 minutes to present to the judge. On a final note, I would like to thank my co-advisors, Dave Feely and Chris Manella, as well as the support of my department head, Shelly Gates. In addition, thank you guys uh, for allowing us to run DECA here at ETHS. These opportunities, as well as the experiences that these students get from the conferences are truly limitless. As a token of our appreciation, each board member will be receiving an Illinois DECA trading pen. Each state, they're really cool, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Each state comes to the international competition and trades their state pin with each other as a, way to begin, as a way to begin to develop their networking skills. Our state pin has Abraham Lincoln on it with a football to represent the College Football Hall of Fame in Atlanta, Georgia, a beluga whale for the aquarium that is in downtown Atlanta, as well as a bottle of uh, Coca-Cola to represent the world of Coke and its origination. Thank you again so much for your support. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Woo! Well, I guess it goes without saying, and, and I misspoke when I said national, international uh, award winners. This is just such a terrific honor. We are so proud of our DECA program. We're so proud of you because it, these are your accomplishments that lift it up to this level of, of uh, accomplishment and recognition. So thank you for the pins, because now we have a pin for each of you. So <laughs> what we're gonna ask you to do uh, is just come around the inside of the horseshoe. We're gonna shake your hands, and when you get to the board president, we have a little memento uh, for this evening here at ETHS as well. Congratulations. And I always have to say to you, your dad ought to be pretty proud. Well done. Congratulations, such a great group. Well done. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well done. Congratulations to all of us. And to all the honorees, you are more than welcome to leave. We'd love to have you stay, but, uh, but uh, there, you certainly don't have to feel obligated. Uh, we just are so thrilled and pleased that we could honor you tonight. Thank you for coming, and thank you to the parents. Right. So we will proceed with our agenda. The next item on the agenda is the report on the, our one-on-one -on -one digital learning. 
Well, David Chan, if you'll come up and bring your team up, and uh, I know you'll be introducing yourselves, and uh, uh, I've seen an outline of the, tonight's presentation, and I can just simply say, I remember when David came, my goodness, what, about four years ago now to talk about one-to-one -one learning? Uh, and uh, I, I suppose that what they do say is, then the rest is history. Uh, but uh, tonight, we're going to really get an, a wonderful overview and reminder that this concept uh, is, is something that can continue to expand and grow. It, it is one-to-one -one uh, Chromebooks, but it's a whole lot more. So I'll turn it over to you. All right. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right. As, as Dr. Witherspoon said, mentioned, this is a, uh, an update on our one-to-one -one digital learning initiative and really instructional technology. Um, a quick review of our team. Uh, my name is David Chan, Director of Instructional Technology. To my left is Ms. Ibrahim, um, Technology Integration Specialist. Ms. Petros is at the uh, computer there, Support Specialist Trainer. And we're missing uh, Ms. Marion, who is our uh, Technology Integration Specialist as well. Um, also missing is our newest staff member, um, Ms. Bollinger. She's our Student Tech Support Center Coordinator, Chrome Zone Coordinator. And then our newest, newest member is uh, Archer Lee Olhouse, which is why Ms. Marion couldn't make it tonight. She's uh, at home with her newborn, our official newborn of the instructional tech team. So, um, <laughs> when you're following up DECA, I got to throw in a baby photo, so hopefully that will get us back. All right. So, uh, as Dr. Wisman said, uh, mentioned again, this is the fourth year of our one-to-one -one program. This is kind of like... This has been our baby for, for four years, and this is where we're watching our baby grow up, right? This is uh, the fourth year. This is the class of 2018. This is the original group that had the first uh, laptops. This is the first day during freshman orientation. We go back four years ago, handing out our, our computers um, and, and having them received. And even before that, one year in the process, uh, met, meeting as a committee um, and working towards uh, making sure we had the best program in place. Um, and I truly believe we have one of the best, uh, despite not being, you know, the first, um, because we have learned from other schools, because we have adapted and adopted um, uh, the program to fit ETHS. Uh, I'm very confident to say that uh, we are doing uh, a great job here. It's hard to quantify that, but in its most simplest form, before one-to-one, -one, teachers would need to go to sign up a, for a lab, a computer lab, right? The BCC formally, or go to a library uh, to get access, even just for like five minutes. You know, as a chemistry teacher before, I had to sign up just to do a graph in Excel. Um, and nowadays, and I see this every day when I walk the halls, um, teachers have access to that computer lab anytime they want. Some core numbers, we have over 3,400 student Chromebooks, uh, 300 uh, staff devices, 173 daily learners, and 115 long-term learners. And we'll explain a little bit more about that in a little bit. It's easier to see the, the effects, though, when we walk the halls, when we work with teachers, when we hear and see the work of our students. I'm so glad, actually, to follow up DECA because um, our update, actually, for, for, this, for this evening is, is really focusing on that, the students. So we'll kick it off first with Ms. Ibrahim. Hello. So this is... Mm -hmm. I forgot the mic. Sorry about that. So this year is year four of Hour of Code. Um, again, celebrating the efforts that David and Mina paved the way for. Um, we celebrated this year by offering um, both large group activities of coding and small group activities in class. Nearly 1,000 students participated in Hour of Code this year through classroom activities in coding through Minesweeper and learning to loop and in coding, and then also through our Student Tech Expo. This was year two of the Student Expo. And that happened during lunch periods. Teachers could sign students up to come through and see what kinds of things were happening around the building through the different organizations in our building that are involved with technology, as well as our partnerships in the community. So we were joined by the Evanston Public Library, um, Women in Computing through Northwestern. They partner with us through Girls Who Code. They were represented at the Tech Expo as well. She is Code was there several other organizations such as Youth Technology Corps and others, um, largely populated by student presenters, which was great. All right. Next up, uh, again, is our Student Tech Support Center. From year one, we designed our Chromebook Tech Support uh, Center to be student-centered. This grew to incorporate a class for two periods, uh, which is led actually by Mr. Haller and Ms. Weber, um, and a volunteer program. This year, largely due to the addition of Ms. Bollinger, uh, we have noticed a growing number of dedicated students serving as leaders in the Chrome Zone. Two of those students are here tonight to briefly share their experiences. Both have been given Student of the Month awards as a small token for the service. Um, we can't thank them enough, but uh, to share, uh, we welcome Keith Hudson and Shireen Awasat. Amazing. 
Um, hello, members of the board. My name is Keith Hudson, I'm a, and I am a, a full-time volunteer at the Chrome Zone. Uh, I joined about three weeks into the school year, and I'm still volunteering today. Um, before the school year started, I was thinking about helping the school with uh, technology stuff and IT. Um, but one of the things that got me to join the Chrome Zone is just the sheer amount of people that come into the Chrome Zone every day just for help. Um, I love helping people, and I love fixing computers, so the Chrome Zone was an, an amazing place, and I'm very grateful that they were able to find a place for me. Um, I normally get to school a bit early, um, so I have extra time to set up the Chrome Zone and make sure everything is uh, in tip-top shape. Um, my main duties in the morning are to set up the kiosks, uh, check out daily loaners, diagnose and occasionally fix student Chromebook problems, and uh, check student Chromebooks in for charging. Um, occasionally, issues, a occasionally after school, I will help out in the back area or repairing Chromebooks and uh, and that mainly consists of uh, replacing screens, keyboards, and fixing op operating system errors. And that's really fun, and it's a great experience. Um, one of the things that I do is I find older laptops in the back, and I try to make them uh, fit for uh, school use. Um, one of the things that I did is I took uh, 15 Series 5 Chromebooks that were just taking up space in the back, and I uh, assigned them as long-term loaners for people without insurance, and that's one of the main reasons why we have uh, 115 loaners, long-term loaners instead of uh, 100 long-term loaners. Um, one of the reasons why I came, one of the reasons why I keep coming back as a volunteer is because I uh, there's always something new to do, and I always enjoy a new challenge, and that's really fun for me to do. Um, as some of you already know, the Chrome Zone offers a summer job, um, and I'm looking forward to that because I can spend more time doing projects that benefit the school further, and benefit me sometimes too. Um, <laughs> All in all, the Chrome Zone is an amazing place for the school, and I'm looking forward to spending my time there in further years. Thanks, Keith. Thank you. I think we'll applaud. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Hi, my name is Shireen Awisat. Uh, I'm an exchange student at ETHS um, with AFS, Ex International Ex Exchange Program. Uh, my exchange organization requires us, the exchange students, to do 100 volunteer hours during our stay in the US, which is 10 months uh, for a whole school year. Um, and this is for, it's actually as a saying thank you for our host school and our host community for hosting us. And um, in order for me to make them, I signed up for volunteering at the ETHS Community Service Club. And through them, I got to learn about the Chrome Zone. And I, re I was really excited because I like working on technology. And through the Chrome Zone, I would achieved my goal of 100 community service hours two months ago. <laughs> 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 um, I volunteer usually at fifth period and after school. Uh, most of the time, it's, it's really busy after school because the students will be bringing uh, the loaners that we give them in the morning. So we check the loaners back in the system and we put them to charge again for their car and their carts to be ready for the next day. Um, unfortunately, my school back home doesn't have a Chrome Zone, um, but I would love to tell them about the Chrome Zone and my experience here so that we can make something at my school. So I'm going back, I'm going to be leaving the US uh, next month to go, to, to go home but for sure, if I had the chance to stay here another year at ETHS, I would still volunteer here because it's a great place. Thanks. Thank you, Shreem. Thank you, Keith. Without them, we really couldn't run the Chrome Zone. Um, we're going to start talking a little bit about some of the work that the students have been completing. Here it is. Here, no. Oh, yeah. It popped on. OK. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm trying to test the ears tonight. Sorry about that. Um, we really couldn't facilitate the work that the students do in the classroom without the Chromebooks and without the loaners for when they inevitably forget them or need to charge. So that being said, we're going to jump into some of the work our students are doing. And the first slide shows one of our sophomore portfolios, our English portfolios this year. Um, our sophomore class created over 800 portfolios. That's over 20 teachers involved in this project, a huge feat to accomplish. Um, Mina and I work tirelessly with teachers to plan and organize and come in and co-teach and make sure that these portfolios happened and were a success so that we can continue to grow them. Um, I think our teachers were pleased with the outcome. Um, our students definitely had the opportunity to 
um, you know, present who they want the world to see they are in their writing and through their growth and their reflection. Um, this transferred over into other website projects as the teachers saw how easy of a tool this was to use. And we therefore saw the teachers implementing multimedia projects as well as websites as apps and different projects that we wish we had enough time to show you today. We could talk for hours, but I'm sure you guys don't have that time today. So that being said, one website to show. Um, some more examples of student work, you know, as David mentioned earlier, when you walk the building, you see students on Chromebooks, whether they're sitting by their lockers catching up or they're in their classrooms getting their work done. And you can see up there some examples of video projects that we facilitated um, through whiteboarding. You can see Dr. Witherspoon is up there. Um, you know, we have kids using the collaborative features of WeVideo, which is a full-blown video editing tool to create entire class projects and in interview our administrators. We're hoping to have more administrators participate in these types of projects in the future. Um, so lots of multimedia projects happening, lots of action with the four C's, you know, communication, collaboration, curation. The students are definitely accessing their 21st century skills and going beyond that so that they're future ready. Good segue. So speaking of future ready, so we consistently encourage our teachers to engage our students in real world problems. In our PLM, we review the four C's and design thinking principles. In our PLM, we work with uh, about 100, 50 teachers each year. Um, enter a ninth grade student uh, named Oliver. Oliver recognized the problem. Students and staff consistently had trouble remembering when the period would start or finish, especially on Mondays and maybe some other special schedules. I can attest, I've been here for 14 years, uh, and we, even though we've had the current schedule for several years, I know Tuesday and Friday down, that's easy, but Mondays, uh, C days, <laughs> uh, I know we get out at 2.09, but other than that, uh, and we don't, you guys do. Uh, Oliver came up with a simple solution. He built a website. When you visit the website, you are immediately shown what period it is and how much time remains. Now this alone would have been a great solution, but he took it one step further. On Chromebooks, there are these little applications called extensions, and they add functionality to your Chrome browser. Uh, we techies geek out on this all the time. I'll spare you from that. Um, what Oliver decided to do was code an extension so that instead of going to a website, which does take a couple more seconds, you could just click on the icon, as you see in this animation, in your browser and get the same information. So within a few months, Oliver had tens of thousands of hits to his site and over 500 installs of this extension, presumably by ETHS uh, staff and students. One of the benefits of managed Chromebooks is that we can automatically install certain extensions via all ETHS accounts. So we have the ability to, to send this to all 4,000 students, staff uh, at ETHS. We're proud to share that we are in discussion to work with Oliver, to share his work, acknowledging him, and reward him for his efforts as well. This is just one example of an ETHS student, again, succeeding and innovating and when given the uh, opportunity and autonomy and purpose to do so. So thank you, Oliver, and we'll give you a, an update uh, later on. Girls Who Code. This year, Mina and I started a new club, Girls Who Code. Um, and we started the club under the premise of, I'm going to speak for Mina in just one second, that we both came from non-coding backgrounds. I was formerly a math teacher, she's so formerly a Latin teacher, and we wanted to open a space for underrepresented populations in coding. So we started a Girls Who Code club through the official organization. Um, moving forward with the club, you know, we started with the curriculum that the club offered for us, but our girls came from varying levels of background, some of them much more experienced than us in coding, and we decided to, you know, tap into that experience and have the girls create projects that they were really interested in. So one of the things the girls decided they wanted to do was to dabble in using JavaScript, CSS, and HTML to develop websites. So as you can see up there, we have two websites. The first one is High Five Dr. Witherspoon, which is modeled off of a similar website. And the girls are working on coding in and um, customizing cursors and having pop-up messages so that some of Dr. Witherspoon's and you know, administration's popular saying, such as this great day to be a wildcat, pop up whenever you high five Dr. Witherspoon. So we're currently in the process of getting the cursor to be that hand and stay that hand when it's in the, in the correct portion of the screen. Another group decided that they wanted to uh, create a fortune teller, or as they might, they have several different names. We're gonna go with fortune teller is what I've known them. And that fortune teller, you do actually click to select a number, and then it will tell you what your positive fortune is for the remainder of the school year. All right, thank you. Okay, so um, <coughs> what's next? Um, just a quick update, we do currently uh, still work and collaborate with the Evanston Public, Li Evanston Public Library to uh, 
lend out 15 currently hotspots to our uh, student uh, base. It's been a very successful program. It's very important uh, to our students. We're looking for ways to kind of actually increase that, either through collaboration or uh, through uh, our own program. Uh, we are currently evaluating uh, Chromebooks for the class of 2022. We have them out in our Chrome zone for anyone, student, staff, to just hammer on and give us feedback, all right? Um, we continue to have an extensive program in place for our Google Expeditions, which are virtual field trips. Um, due to our work with classes and students, we were actually accepted into the uh, Expeditions Creator Beta program, where we now have the ability to create our own. And this past month, uh, Ms. Petros took the lead and worked with eight sets of staff members to build a virtual tour of the unique, some of the unique learning spaces at ETHS. We'll use this as a sample when we visit several classrooms in the upcoming weeks to have students actually design their own to share with others. Um, yeah, you want to just open? We'll just open one. So the way this works is um, we take a, a 360 photo of a site. So this is the geometry and construction site. And then we, using the tour builder, we're able to actually add elements where we can show students, you know, when they click on this one piece, they can, um, in this case, uh, they can see an old design, the original design for the house. We can show kind of like over time the progression of the house uh, as, and this is all viewable via 3D. So when they're moving around uh, 360, not with the cursor, but in the actual viewer, they can uh, be in, uh, immersed in this experience. So uh, we're excited to actually see where the students take this, right? So this is just a sample we made for the students to kind of see and get a kind of hands-on feel to it. But um, really, we want to see where they go. What places do they love in either Evanston or community? Uh, and what other uh, opportunities, what can they teach us uh, using this uh, new uh, technology? So that's the uh, Burton Aquatic Center as well. Thanks. Thank you, Daniel. All right. Um, as a reminder, ETH's faculty and staff continue to share their work uh, on a local, state, and national level. Level ETHS has featured presenters and program committee members for Midwest Google Summits, uh, NICE, Northern Illinois Computing Educators, IS, I, IETC, and ISTE. Um, ISTE is actually coming to Chicago in June. Um, it's, it welcomes over 20,000 um, visitors. Uh, it's going to be at McCormick Place, so I definitely welcome if, if board members are interested or administrators are interested in attending. A um, couple quick shout outs. ETHS hosted the, the Minicon this year. It's been previously at Niles North and Stevenson uh, before that. Mina and Alia were the co-chairs this year, and the teachers who presented were Mr. Barlow, Ms. Payne, Ms. Dr. Busio, Mr. Stevenson, Ms. Miller Berry, and Ms. Young, and Ms. Petros. So uh, a wide array of representation from ETHS. Um, this year I helped co-chair the ICE conference, and we moved to a new location, so that was a, a pretty big deal, moving from Pheasant Run out in St. Charles over to the uh, Schaumburg Renaissance Center. Um, and we were very proud of that move. Uh, Alia, Gary, Hall, Mr. Haller, and Ms. Ms. Mr. Barlow presented at ICE. And then lastly at ISTE, again, 20,000 educators coming up. Um, Mina, Alia, and Sarah Young will be presenting, and then I am currently on the planning committee of that. So we're, again, very proud of our team's efforts, uh, again, always representing uh, the great work that our students and staff do here at ETHS. Uh, last year, we ended on um, notification that we were accepted as a Google Reference District. Uh, today, we remain one of eight districts in Illinois with that distinction, and we continue to host schools and district leaders to learn from our staff and students. Just last week, we hosted members from the Round Lake Area School District 116 for a second time, uh, as we've been a model for the program that they are in the process of building. So we're pleased to share uh, what we're doing here to help them. And then lastly, um, we are very excited uh, to be nominated for uh, the team category. The Chrome Zone team has been nominated uh, for the Those Who Excel Award, uh, specifically, again, in the team category. And again, uh, you know, the work that's being done here is, is largely due to the success of this team uh, right here and our students, of course. All right. I think that's all right. So yes, thank you very much. Um, well, if there are any questions, we'll pause here and take them. And it all started that we were going to buy some Chromebooks. <laughs> yeah, so, wow. so like four years ago? Four right? years ago. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing. It's amazing. Any questions? Great, excellent. Are there questions? Pat, yes. Yeah, thank you. This is amazing. Um, I just had a quick question about the adults, because mm -hmm. um, the kids obviously are way, way ahead. Um, but what kind of opportunities do our teachers and other um, adults in the building have to learn how to better use Absolutely. the technology to support the students? Sure. Uh, and this is definitely an area where I feel we do excel. Um, from the very beginning, four years ago, and, and, and leading into that, the committee identified <coughs> 
that the program is only as, as successful actually as the staff that's helping lead the charge. And you only get buy-in from staff if they feel that they are prepared to work with devices in the classroom. So um, I still remember, you know, before we, we rolled out one-to-one, -one, so in the 2013-2014 school year, we still had the PSAE test. And there were two days where, you know, teachers who weren't handing out uh, pencils and Kleenex were able to go to a professional development session. We called it a Chrome camp. And so that began our um, uh, initiatives to work with teachers. Now that has progressed. We've had, I think, over 13 Chrome camps over the past four years, whether it's the testing days when we went from PSAE to PARC to um, PSAT now, to summer opportunities, so having our teachers come in during the summer, um, to PD Mondays. And so for the past two years with our professional learning modules, we have engaged 50 teachers each year. It's, it always sells out, it's the first one to fill up, um, and teachers sign up to be a part of our group to again, learn more and take deeper dives really. For the PLM, we focus more on not just you know, substitution, not just how to use the, the computer in the classroom, but really how do you transform instruction? How do you really uh, accomplish things that you couldn't accomplish before without the technology? So uh, as Ali mentioned, the four C's, but really having our, our teachers reflect on what they're doing and whether technology is, is useful or not, to be quite frank, like having them evaluate each time as well. Dave, and David's very humble, right? Our Chrome training is the top rated professional development training in the school, teachers and staff, wow. they love it. Fun. That's awesome. Yes, it is. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, must be useful. <laughs> yes. If teachers love the training, it, it, it makes it easier. You're right. <laughs> so my experience with technology, I mean, you have you have early adopters, and then you have not quite as early adopters, and you have late adopters and non-adopters. <laughs> and you know, I think we we're all amazed at how uh, technology can transform. You know how classes are taught, how you know how kids are taught, how learning happens. <clears throat> but I'm curious: is do you have any any ideas or metrics around uh, how we're doing with our faculty and, and what what type of transformative change is occurring, mm -hmm. and how deep is it? You know, I, I don't know if there's any way really to track that. Right. So I just think I, I will go qualitatively. I mean, everything we did in this presentation we probably wouldn't have been able to share four years ago. So that in and of itself, each slide, each program, whether it's the Hour of Code to uh, the student project, and we could have, as, as Alia mentioned, we could have gone hours of talking about student projects and the teachers who are working on these projects, the 800 portfolios. That would not have been possible um, in four years ago. So, um, you know, when we talk about the, the adoption, I, I really feel that we, as former teachers, so Mina and Alia and myself are all former teachers, we understand that the teachers are gonna come in at different places and we work with them wherever they are. And on top of that, we encourage our teachers to actually, we use them, quite frankly, just as much to spread the word, right? And we know that if a teacher is excited about something and then they share with other teachers, that's gonna have a greater weight than even us as former teachers. So, um, you know, again, qualitatively, when I walk the halls and I just look in the classrooms and we see and we hear the great things that are happening, and I, I will go back to, to if things were not working, I would hear about it a lot more, number one. Uh, number two, I think there would be, you know, we can see just analytically on just the usage of the devices, the number of devices that are in, in active use, right, is, is astronomical. That number would be much lower if, they weren't using them in the classroom, right? right? So um, I can do some more number crunching. I can look into that, but I am I'm very confident that, that what we're doing and is um, and the teachers that are buying it and and, and using it in the classroom is, is very strong. And, and I'll just speak empirically uh, because our administrators are in all the classrooms of the school, evaluating and 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 observing in classrooms on a regular basis, and. I, I think at least I'd be willing to say the vast, vast, vast majority of our teachers are utilizing technology in their classrooms, the Chromebooks in particular, they're, they're, they're seeing applications uh, to their content or subject area. And so uh, unlike a lot of places where, where maybe they still have uh, quite a few faculty members to drag along, uh, we're just not dragging people along. People are, are really leaning in, into the use of the technology, and I would agree. I know you must find people at different 
levels of comfort and, and usage, uh, but uh, it's really high uh, here at ETHS. Janet. Yeah, my question is kind of related to Mark's, but takes it sort of to the next uh, level, I guess. The technology is, is exciting and it's fascinating, and I have no there's no question in my mind about how, how widespread it is. I'm curious, though, about sort of the, the, the long-term evaluation of the educational impact of the technological change. And I know, you know, this is obviously a national phenomenon, and I'm just wondering if there are any efforts either at here at ETHS or with ETHS participating in some sort of national effort to look at what the impact on learning is of the increased technology. Yeah, so it definitely, you know, when I get articles in my inbox and I've seen, I'm seeing a growing, you know, trend in terms of, yes, what, you know, it's one thing to, to buy the devices and, and distribute them and even teach teachers how to use them and, and that can be successful, but what's ultimately happening in the classroom, how does that impact? So, you know, I don't think we'll ever tie it to like student test scores or grades or anything like that, but again, um, we, yes, we will look at and measure and, and talk with, really it's conversations with our staff and, you know, finding out and just, again, coming back to our PD and our PLM, we tell our teachers, like, if you roll out something that we talked about, you do we, we video for a project, get the feedback from the students too and ask them, could this have been done without the technology? And right. did it serve a purpose? Right. Did it improve instruction? Right. And we challenge our teachers to do that and if the answer is no, this does not help, then scrap it, you know, do something, go back to pen and paper, yeah. do what you need to do, um, but more often than not, uh, it has infected it and it has made a positive impact and it's allowed our students to gain access to an authentic audience, to share their work, um, not just in the classroom, but outside that. And so I think the opportunities, we're still, even even now, even with all the successes, we're still scratching at the surface. And we just did a, a, a workshop today with the CT, the Applied Arts uh, Career and Technical Education work, uh, Department, and just the excitement in that room about the possibilities. We, we just showed them how to do more podcasting and, and video creation and, um, and, and all of a sudden all these light bulbs just turning on in their heads and, and the ideas that they had for their students and their projects um, is just gonna continue to grow. So, um, but to come back around, constantly reinforcing, evaluating and, and getting the pulse of your classroom and your students and the effect of the technology. That's great, thank you. Thank you. Jude. Um, portfolios, I think it's just phenomenal from the days of having a scrapbook and trying to keep, you know, evidence of your experience as a student. Um, at what grade level do students start the portfolios and do they keep building on them and is there like a finished product and, and if you've been doing it long enough, do you have seniors um, using them at this point in their high school career and how so? Right. Great question. Um, this was the first year for the portfolio project with the 10th grade students. And we're actually in discussion with Dr. Bavis uh, and several other uh, department chairs and administrators to find out, to see where are other pockets of opportunity to continue to grow. We know we want to be cautious. We want to make this just a checklist thing or just another thing that students have to go through. We want to make the portfolio really valuable for the student. And, and not just valuable while they're here at ETHS, but to come around to one of your points, after ETHS, to have them have something that they can show, whether it's to a college or to a future employer, um, to just their family and friends. We want them to be proud of their work that they do here at ETHS, and the portfolio is just one kind of repository it can be for that, but really we want to talk about how to, to make it uh, really an example of, of student growth and how they can showcase that work. So we are talking about that. We are talking about absolutely having that vertical alignment where, you know, ideally a student starts their freshman year or even down, uh, through their middle school years and, and having the work that they are proud of through their, throughout their K-12, pre-K-12 education uh, and, and take it with them as well. So. Um, Stay tuned. Uh, I think next year, a year from now, we'll have a, a, an even bigger update perhaps on that. So, mm -hmm, Absolutely. And, and I might add, so right now with the sophomore, it's primarily a, a writing portfolio. But, you know, there, there's so much media available to the students. And so, you know, they can build this out. And maybe a student has a flute solo. Maybe mm -hmm. a, a segment where they were in YAML. Uh, maybe a project that they sure. did in their uh, history class. I, I, I mean, all of a sudden, it's that writing portfolio, but, it, but it's a basis for a whole comprehensive documentation of, 
of work they're proud of uh, throughout their time, you know, and then they get to a senior studies project or, mm -hmm. or you know, some capstone project. So, um, uh, or organizing a student walkout. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, if you think about it though, there, there's, there's just such great potential and, and we really have the tools and, 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 and the, you know, technical as well as instructional leaders uh, to help develop these portfolios into something very rich. Yeah, one of, the, <clears throat> one of the things I'd like to point out is that next year at this time, we'll have half of the students will have the infrastructure in place for portfolios. We'll have all the juniors and all the sophomores. So, uh, and the architecture you saw up there for the uh, sophomore English course is uh, built so that it can accommodate more courses within that portfolio system. So David and his team was, were very intentional uh, at the front end of building something that wouldn't be for one course, but that could could grow and accommodate other courses uh, throughout an academic career. So it's that kind of forward thinking uh, that, that the team brings to the table and is much appreciated uh, from this digital uh, immigrant, really. So thanks. Thank you. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for thank the you presentation. Thank you for the work you're doing, and to the students, thank you for coming and sharing yeah. your experience with us. We really appreciate both of you. Thank you. All right. So next on our agenda, we're going to have a discussion about the school calendar for the school year 2019-20. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, uh, and not 1920. 1920. <laughs> right. 2019. But, <laughs> we weren't around then. <laughs> Even I wasn't around in 1920. <laughs> uh, thank you all again. Thank Terrific. You. Um, so, um, board, uh, I am really pleased to present this uh, this calendar uh, proposal to you tonight uh, because uh, with some very minor changes we can accomplish something major here at ETHS. And so what this calendar is, is doing, although it overwhelmingly mirrors our past calendars, because indeed it is a school year, uh, what, what uh, we're proposing in this calendar is that we go with one of the earlier start dates that we've had in recent years. So, so we're recommending that we would start the, on Wednesday the 21st of August. Now I said one of our earlier, because just in 2016, we started on August 22nd. Mm -hmm. So this is not like, like a, a start date that, that is so uh, uh, astronomically different than something that we, we've done in recent years. Uh, but given the fact that this is um, a leap year and we've, we've, we've done some changes in recent years, such as we no longer have Pulaski Day, we no longer do Columbus Day, you know, there have been, been kind of some evolving changes in our calendar that, would, that really allow for something that, that uh, we have seen a need for for many, many years. Um, uh, it's not a model that we have invented. But we finally, I think, have an opportunity to adopt the model here. And that would be that we would be able to complete first semester and final exams before winter break. And as you know, that's a model in almost all colleges and universities. Yes. That is a model in many high schools. So I'm not even pretending it's innovative. But what I am suggesting is that, that, that we have found a way, I think, to do it without doing really drastic changes to our calendar. So for example, we would start school on Wednesday the 21st. Uh, if we were mirroring, mirroring uh, District 65 identically, we would be starting the following Monday. By starting those three days early, and I, I mentioned that at the high school, unlike the elementary or K-8 uh, district, we actually, our, our first day, our, it's a half day for students. Yeah whether you're a freshman in the morning or whether you're upperclassman uh, in, in the afternoon. So it, we're really talking about two full days of school. And by doing those two full days, we can actually accomplish uh, achieving uh, final exams uh, uh, completed by the uh, uh, winter break. Obviously, for st from a student point of view, uh, we really think that this is addressing uh, both our wellness goal as well as our academic goal. 
uh, uh, wellness-wise, um, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, the way we're set up now, uh, it's certainly possible for students, uh, and probably many and most do, just forget about school for that winter break, but it's still hanging over their heads. Yeah. And there's still this idea that I'm gonna come back and the way it worked this year, for example, I'm gonna have one week to get back into my classes, to get retooled, to get those assignments finished up and, and in, to review for my finals and start finals the very next week. Instructionally, to be honest with you, that lack of continuity of instruction, I think probably every student and certainly our faculty would tell you is not advantageous. To have the semester go up to the winter break, break instruction, and then try to get back into it after being gone for two weeks uh, um, uh, to, to retool and, and get ready for and take finals uh, just simply does not work the best. And we've known that for years. We've just known it for years. We just simply haven't been able to solve it. Uh, finally, uh, what this calendar does, however, is keep all of the other major holiday some breaks consistent with District 65. We would have the same Thanksgiving break. We would have the same winter break. We would have the same, uh, well, all the, the regular holidays, uh, and we would have the same spring break. So we would be able, by, by starting those three days early or two days and the partial day early, mm -hmm. we would be able to remain with all that same continuity and accomplish something that uh, uh, I think all the educators in the school would say, and probably all of the students are close to it. If I'm missing any, Emma would, would probably say, you know, about time. <laughs> and this is the recommendation, and it, it, it's uh, uh, for your consideration okay. tonight. Great. Thank you. Thank you for explaining that mm -hmm. so clearly. Gretchen. Um, this generally sounds um, like it makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I just have two questions. Um, the first is, uh, historically, we've had a calendar committee that's included some per parent representation on it. Um, and I'm wondering um, whether that committee exists, whether it's weighed in on this, whether we, and, and whether that's the case or not, whether we've had input from parents and, and taken their point of view into consideration since my point of view is probably less relevant than theirs. Uh, I'll check here in a minute with uh, Dr. Robinson, but I can say uh, we do have a committee, but I, I can't uh, uh, affirm that there was parent involvement on this particular committee. And I will say that uh, it has been more of a distance learning kind of committee in the last couple years with District 65. We've tried very hard to convene the committee over and over again. Um, uh, it's been very difficult for them to send anybody or, or maybe a rep, and I know that the, the rep has, has been a, fa a staff member, not a, not a parent. Uh, I can't speak for, for what, what their committee has been internally over there. Uh, so what we've done is a lot of email exchange of, of calendars and that. Uh, Dr. Robinson, uh, Dr. Robinson is associate principal uh, and, and uh, chairs the uh, calendar committee. Uh, were you able to have parent involvement this, uh, developing this one? Turn the mic on. Hit your button. There. Good afternoon, evening. 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 Um, this year we did not formally have a parent representative on the uh, committee. Uh, we did have counselors and support staff, teachers, and administrators. Okay. I, I would feel better, I guess, if you had said that we had in some way solicited parent input on this. Um, but I, I, have, I love the idea of the final exams before the break. I just, I, for future reference going forward, I, I really wish we could get input. I mean, the school calendar is one of those things that really impacts families. Um, because they've got to get their kids to school on the first day of um, school, whatever that day may be, and you know it's it's good to know that they have some support for this idea. So I think it would be helpful, and you know, rather than responding after the fact, um, presuming we adopt this calendar for the year going forward, to to get that one way or another. 
it's, you know, it's not always easy to get that input, and I, I have no particular suggestion for how to do it. <laughs> I just <laughs> toss that idea out there. Um, and then secondly, my, my second question, a smaller and maybe easier one, is how does this idea of getting the final exams in before the winter break look in years going forward? Mm -hmm. Presumably we've done that exercise, and in fact usually we're presented with the calendar, a tentative calendar. We approve it yearly, but usually we have, and, and maybe I missed it, with a tentative calendar going forward two to three years, because parents are always clamoring to get that because they're booking, you know, some trip or whatever. I, I can speak to that. Uh, first of all, uh, th this is technically two years in advance next year and the second year after. Good point. But, but, uh, but uh, we, we will start immediately uh, looking at the year following that, to be honest uh, uh, with you, uh, b because we, we would like to, uh, um, uh, you know, see how this plays out. I can tell you, though, that we have looked ahead and we would be able to continue uh, a very similar calendar uh, with the finals now perpetually ending uh, right before winter break. So, so our plan is to keep it going. Yes, to keep it going. The one thing that would change uh, in future years, uh, unless we would be very deliberate about it, uh, graduation day would not fall on Memorial Day weekend right. uh, in, in future years. Now, we could probably be very deliberate and try to make that happen if we decided that was a good plan, uh, but, but it actually ended up because of, you know, where in the month Memorial Day fell and, and all of that this year. Uh, but, but the final exam schedule, yes. Do we have one more year for graduation at the remote location or are we back? Uh, this year and so yeah, by the time this calendar that. comes we'll be back at uh, back to Northwestern. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Emma. Yeah, if I may chime in um, just to give a student's perspective I told a friend of mine that this idea was on the table and I believe the quote was well I wish I wasn't graduating. <laughs> so <laughs> Yeah, we have like two weeks left, so that's big. Um, yeah, so that's all I have. <laughs> yeah. We don't, wanna, we don't want you to change, <laughs> your friend to change. Pat. No, I just was going to say what Emma said. I, I appreciate that we want input, um, but I think students and families who deal with the stress of students worrying about exams over the winter break and that crazy time at the beginning of January, I think you would have, you'd, be hard pressed to find students in the building who didn't agree that this is a great idea. And when I think New Trier, or uh, area schools have done it, there was buzz at Evanston like, wait, why don't we get to do that? So yeah. I think there is yeah. strong support among certainly our students and as a parent, right. I would say, of my student as well, yeah. support for this. So. New Trier's not doing it though. No, they did okay. it one no. year. Maybe they did it, was, it one year. But the, yeah, but the, the Nile schools yeah, the Nile. do it. Some, yeah, some uh, several schools, schools are doing mm -hmm. it. Except I think it, several of the North Cook High School districts yeah, do. It would yeah. be hard to go back. <laughs> right, once we were you've done looking it, yeah. ahead. Yeah. I think that, that our community will like this, our school community and staff. Uh, Jonathan, I'm sorry. All right, well thank you Dr. Robinson for popping in and thank you Dr. Witherspoon for giving us this yeah. great information. No, th thank you, thanks for your consideration on yes. this. And we'll be, bring it back to you as a proposed action item yes. uh, to the next meeting. To the next meeting, yes. So as we discuss at this meeting and then yeah. we will yeah. take action and, on and, it And if later. more discussions needed at that time, we'll, yes. be, we'll be ready for it. Okay, all right, so Dr. Bay, this is getting the clipboard and he sits, I will ask Dr. Bayless, are there comments from the public? Uh, we don't have anyone signed up for comments at this time. Okay, thank you. All right, so the next item is FOIA. We have one, two, three, four in <laughs> our packet that I'm sure we've reviewed. Any questions or any more information to share? Uh, no, there's four uh, in your, in your uh, packet and uh, the responses are, are there. Okay, thank you. All right. So we're at board committee reports. We have a report in the packet of the joint District 65, District 202 committee report that uh, Mr. Baum has completed, and, and I think a few of us were at that meeting. Um, at board, you've reviewed that, and I don't know if you have questions to share or other thoughts. All right. 
Um, so we're at the student board report. Hello, everyone, um, and welcome to the first day of AP testing. <laughs> so for the next two weeks, students will be in and out of the classroom taking exams, and the tests range anywhere from two to four hours. They give students a chance to earn college credit, or if they're going to Northwestern, to not earn college credit. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, student Senate actually recently held a vote and decided to change the organization's name to the Student Union. A student union just better reflects our eclectic, uh, unelected group. A student union pledges its constant dedication to student voice, equity, and the pursuit of a better school and community. And right now, student union is working with Moms Demand Action to organize their June 2nd event. The event will take place in Fountain Square from 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. and will feature various speakers and performances about how gun violence affects all of us. In other news, juniors Molly Hartenstein and Blaine Pratt are starting um, an indigenous rights club for next year. The club will raise awareness about the history and marginalization of indigenous peoples. So stay tuned for next October's Indigenous Peoples Day. And this is my last board report. Mm -hmm. So if I may, I would like to say a little something. But um, I, I decided to run for student rep about a week before the election. I was concerned about managing the college application process, wild, wild kit radio, um, and schoolwork. But I ran in what was one of the strangest campaigns ETHS has ever seen, and it paid off. Somehow I managed, and I wouldn't trade the experience of serving a student rep for the world. This year, I had the incredible opportunity to work with this board um, and student union. The group is outspoken, passionate, and unwavering in their commitment to the Evanston community. And 2018 brought about the largest student demonstration in the history of the school a movement which had representatives coming into the school to ask questions about the future they wanted to see. I learned how to communicate, I learned how to listen, and above all, I learned how to lead. So thank you to everyone serving on this board. It has been an absolute honor working with you. And a special thanks to Dr. Witherspoon and Dr. Campbell and my loving family. I could not have done it without all of your support. Phoebe, I know you've got this. You will do incredible things, and I'm so proud of you. Well, before we go on, I don't know if other board members. There's a place on the agenda. Is if, there? Uh, if Where if is you want to wait for that. All right, I'll wait. Just, just, just be, you can do it now. No. Or, <laughs> or you, <laughs> it's coming up very shortly. All right. Stick to the script. Fine. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Then, Dr. Witherspoon, <laughs> it's your turn. Yeah, I should have let you go on now, though, because you're getting me a little emotional here, Are Emma. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Uh, that was beautiful, by the way. <laughs> very, very lovely. Uh, so uh, uh, this evening, I'd like to uh, uh, just uh, remind everybody that uh, our con school construction season uh, is already underway. You might remember that we uh, did asbestos abatement over spring break to get a jump on the, the new entrance three uh, the, the, the back here in the athletic area. Uh, and now, uh, starting this week, uh, we're, we're uh, underway with other staging and, and setting up of summer construction. The reason being, we're going to need Entrance 3 when school starts, and this is a little more than a typical summer project. Uh, but it's going to be a total renovation, uh, new entrance, new look, uh, new space for students to, to uh, gather before and after school and wait for rides, uh, elevator up to those upstairs gyms where we've had people having a difficult time if, if there was a, 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 a competition up there, restrooms up there. I'll leave the rest for the open house when we do the ribbon cutting, but uh, I wanted to remind everybody that there are, you are going to see some uh, construction staging taking place uh, at the back of the school. Um, also, uh, we uh, uh, had the pleasure of attending the uh, annual Teacher Excellence Awards uh, that were held uh, last week. Um, this is a, uh, a, an award program um, conceived by and, and sustained by the teachers themselves, where teachers uh, honor the best of, 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 among themselves. Uh, and, uh, and this year, uh, we want to congratulate Franz Kaliks from the History Department, Ellen Freire from the Science Department, and Lynette Hill from Career and Technical Education Department, who were honored by their colleagues. Nice. So that, that was very, very nice. 
Uh, there are a bunch of fine arts events coming up as the school year ends, and I, I'd like to highlight them uh, so that uh, anybody listening in can really think about trying to get out for, for some of these. Um, uh, our freshmen and sophomores are going to be pre presenting Alice in Wonderland. Uh, this is an annual children's production that they do in the spring, and tickets are available online. That's going to be um, uh, this week, May 11th and 12th. So uh, encourage people to get to that. Uh, the Jazz Big Band Concert is going to be on May 15th at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. The Spring Band Concert will be May 17th at 7 p.m. in the auditorium. The Spring Choral Concert will be May 22nd at 7.30 p.m. in the auditorium. Uh, also, on May 22nd, our ETHS speech and debate team is hosting Nationals Night Showcase. That's uh, at 7 o'clock p.m. in the Little Theater, and you can get a look at this tremendous uh, speech and debate team that has several uh, uh, students who have qualified for the national competition coming up later this month. Uh, May 24th is the Spring Orchestra Concert. That's at 7.30 p.m. On May 24th and 25th is the uh, Spring Play. That is the Bluest Eye, uh, and it will be in the Upstairs Theater at 7.30 in the evening. You can tell this isn't quite my uh, swan song uh, uh, for, for the school year yet, but it's getting close enough that I need to announce semester exams. This is when you know it's getting close, folks. Semester exams are going to be the 29th, uh, uh, May 29th through the 31st, uh, and we've been posting that exam schedule. The late registration period for summer school begins May 29th, and that goes right up through June 1st as we are about ready to launch summer school for this year. And I know that Emma will appreciate this one, the last day of school for seniors is Thursday, May 24th, when the class of 2018 will prepare for their graduation on June 3rd. It will indeed be out at the Sears Center in Hoffman Estates for one more year. I can only say to those of you who didn't attend last year, the drive is worth it. It's lovely once you get there. Uh, but then when we get back to Northwestern, they should have quite a facility for us uh, the year after this. Um, and we uh, have been distributing and posting information on that. Finally, I would like to add uh, something uh, that, that uh, really um, is thrilling to report to you. Uh, we did indeed today uh, uh, get word from the uh, Moody's Investor Service that we have once again qualified for a triple A bond rating. Oh, wonderful. Nice and, and I'd really like to highlight uh, the first time we earned this was in 2008. Every two years when we go out to sell bonds, we have to be re-rated. And so this is the fifth consecutive AAA bond rating. There are only a handful of districts, high school, school districts in America, I mean like a handful that have a AAA bond rating. And I thought this year uh, it was interesting uh, because this is what always scares me about it. And I thought it was interesting that they noted that we are in an, uh, in an, uh, um, in an area while we have a good tax base and good management, that uh, the city of Chicago has a BA1 negative rating and the uh, state of Illinois has a BAA3 negative rating and they go on to say, but this is still a triple A rated school district. So thank you for your care and concern of the fiscal management of this district and um, five consecutive ratings. It's a big, big deal for ETHS. And that concludes my report. Wow. Mary, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, so our next set of items are action items, and I am going to call for a motion with the roll call vote to be um, made to retire the board to Sine DA. So moved. 
Second. Okay, roll call, please. Yes. 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 So um, I am going to ask Dr. Davis to assume the role of President Pro Tem. Thank you. Um, I'd like to call the meeting uh, back to order and ask for a roll call vote. Paul. Here. Yes. That's yeah. right. Yeah. That's yes. Here. Here it works. Here. Voting here. here. You're not voting. You're just calling back to order, so it's here. Oh, yes. Yeah. Here. 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 Okay, so uh, now that uh, I am the president pro tem, um, I'm going to walk you through a process. I'm going to take nominations for the office of president. Uh, tonight, we're going to elect president, vice president, and secretary. Nominations need to be seconded, and each nomination will be voted on in the order of their nomination. Once a candidate receives a majority of votes of the board, four votes, the election process is over. Did you say nominations need be seconded? Yes. Nominations need to be seconded. Okay. Uh, so at this time, I'd like to call for nominations for the Office of President of the Board of Education for a one-year term. Uh, it's my pleasure to nominate Pat Savage Williams for president. Seconded. Second. Are there any other nominations at this time? Uh, seeing no uh, nominations, I'm going to close the uh, nomination and call for a vote. Bob? No. Claude? Yes. Marcel? Yes. Metz? Yes. Carson? Yes. Livingston? Yes. Savage Yes. Uh, so now I would like the uh, new president to assume the chair and continue uh, the election of vice president and secretary. Thank you, Dr. Bavis. Um, I would like to call for a nomination for vice president. I would like to nominate Monique Parsons as vice president of the ETHS 202 board. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Um, are there other nominations for the Office of Vice President? Hearing none, I'll close the nominations and call for a vote. Can we have a roll call, please? Paul. Yes. Claude? Yes. 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 Thank you. Now I'd like to call for nominations for the Secretary of the Board of Education. Pete, right? Uh, I'll nominate uh, Pete Davis. Second. <clears throat> Are there other nominations for the Office of Secretary? Hearing none, I'll close that nomination. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes. 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 Thank you. Yes. Okay. And finally, I'd like to call for a motion to appoint Mary Rodino as school treasurer of the Board of Education for a one year term with a compensation of $1,000. So moved. Second. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes. 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 Okay. So moving right along, organization of the board. Um, I would like to call for the approval of the following resolutions. Resolution ratifying acts contracts, policies, and bylaws, resolution designating signatory, Resolu resolution regarding sec check signatures, resolution ratifying approval of depositories, 
resolution establishing regular meeting dates and place. And finally, resolution establishing dates to review closed session minutes. Could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. All in favor? I'd like to d discuss one of the oh, resolutions. I'm sorry. Yes. The resolution uh, setting the meeting dates. Yes. I have a question. Um, when I was on the District 65 board, it met um, almost every month, it met twice, except in the summer. And when I came on this board, most of the time, except for the summer, we met twice a month. And the District 65 board still meets twice a month, but we have been uh, going down in the number of times that we meet during the year in a consistent pattern so that this year, for example, we only have uh, uh, four two-meeting months and in the next calendar we only have three two-meeting months. And I'm just curious why there is so little for this board to do. So, I, you know, so I guess my question <laughs> I, and I, I'm sorry to ask to ask a question in response to your question, but I'm wondering if there's if there's stuff that we're not doing, if there's something that that should be done that this board is not doing. I don't know. It's just something must something has changed over prior years that that there is less need for board meetings, and I don't know what that is. Well, maybe I'll speak to that. Um, we actually mirrored last year's calendar. Uh, the only difference uh, would be uh, one meeting in September instead of two. Right. Uh, to be perfectly honest with you, um, September, we are trying to get the school up and running. Uh, there certainly is business that needs to be done, but we can pack all that business into one meeting and, and literally allow staff and others to devote their time to getting school underway. Then we do go to two meetings in October. That's the only change uh, from last year. Uh, we did just receive, and I'm sorry, I didn't bring it with me, but uh, 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 Lisa and I receive a national report. 80% of the school districts in America meet uh, once a month. So, so District 65 really isn't the national model at all. Uh, and it's definitely not the model of the high school districts uh, in our area. Okay. So we didn't, we weren't trying to go to once a month, to be honest, but we weren't trying to mirror District 65 either. Uh, they also tend to meet till 11 and 12 o'clock at night. So I, you know, I'm not 100% sure what, what the difference is, but I know that there is a difference. Uh, but again, uh, uh, we did make one minor change from, from last year, and that was September. Other, mm -hmm. other than that, we, we uh, stuck with the same schedule as last year. I, Gretchen, you had a question. I had a very small question. Um, we have a resolution to approve bylaws. Do we, we don't have bylaws, do we? Am I confused? We have, we have the policy. I, ju I just wanted to make sure I'm not missing something before right. I vote on it. <laughs> right. I don't think we have bylaws. Right. It says policies and bylaws. Yeah, maybe yeah. we could just strike the bylaws. Yeah, just yeah. You, you could scratch it if yeah. you wanted yeah. to. Yes, yeah. yeah. maybe I'll, can I amend? Yes. We had the motion in the second. I'll move to amend and strike the word bylaws. Yes, yeah, strike the word bylaws. I, I don't know if we need yeah. a, so whatever. Yeah. Just do it. No, I think if the, if the consent of the maker and the seconder, you don't need I think we're good. a vote. Right. Okay. Other questions? <clears throat> okay, so for this, we don't need a roll call. So yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, so now we're at item number 15, review of student election and oath of office for student board representative. Yes, um, I'll start off with the uh, resolution de declaring the results of the student board election. Uh, be it resolved by the Board of Education District 202, County of Cook, State of Illinois, that the returns for the student election held on April 29th uh, in high school district for the purpose of electing one student member and one student alternate member of the Board of Education in said district to serve from May 7, 2018 to May 6, 2019 are as follows. 
Phoebe Licardo uh, and Owen Travis. Uh, Phoebe Licardo will serve as the student board member and Owen Travis will serve as the alternate uh, member of the Board of Education. Can I get, uh, well, we have to pass it. Yes, um, so could I get a motion to approve Phoebe Licardo as the student board representative? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Okay, so next we're going to go to the recognition of the retiring student board member, and then what we're going to do, I will then do the oath for the incoming board member, uh, and we'll do that oath up here. Uh, but first, uh, I'll turn it over to, uh, to the president, and uh, you'll start the, thank you. the, the congratulations yes, I was, and thank yous. I was really anxious <laughs> to do this <laughs> earlier. So um, I will start with, with my board colleagues. If anybody um, would like to mm -hmm. offer words to our retiring student rep. I'll go first. Okay. Just because that way I don't have to say what everybody else says. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, you have been a delightful representative, and it's been such a pleasure to have you on our board. You've been a clear and, and articulate and passionate voice uh, on behalf of the students, and I know they must appreciate you fully. They must. If not, we should have a talk with them. Uh, you're going to do great things moving on. And, you know, I, I know how hard it is to come to all these meetings, and I know for a student, with all the pressures you have in high school, it, it, it's a huge commitment that you've made. And you know, I think that your, your peers and this board and the community owe you a debt of gratitude. So thank you for your service. Mm -hmm. And great luck, and uh, go get them. Great luck being a wild cat. Wild cat. Yeah. <laughs> right. Get to cat. So, so same. I mean, you know, I just want to say it's, it's real clear just thank you for your authentic voice you know and and thank you for your commitment and um, and your action and for bringing all that to this table um, you know it's not easy right to speak among us adults who think we know everything and we make decisions but the fact that you found your voice in your space and being very comfortable in in bringing the student voice to the surface is deeply appreciated. So thank you and, and good luck. Others, Pat? So uh, of course I echo what's already been said, but I, I want to say that you should be very proud of yourself for stepping up because um, there are a lot of people that need to step up, many much older than you that don't. And to take this on at 17, which as I assume you were when you first uh, were elected, um, is a big deal. And um, I think stepping up and using your voice to, to support others is um, something that's very powerful. And I hope that this has been a good experience for you. We've loved having you. Um, but I, I really hope that this is just the first step of many steps for you. Um, and I, I predict that it is. Um, and so just thank you for doing that. And, and Keep going because it's really um, it's great that you did it at such a young age and you got a lot ahead of you to really to continue using your voice and stepping up on behalf of others. So thank you, Jonathan. I, I just wanted to observe that you are were in this position in a very special time, yeah. and um, you know when they say great things happen when a great person meets a great moment, and a great moment occurred and you were there to lead and we all appreciate that. Gretchen. I'll jump in. Um, I knew your parents before I knew you, um, but I've been super lucky to be able to um, have a few extra minutes of time beyond our board meetings when I, when I drive you home after the board meetings, and I'm really gonna miss that company. Um, but I just, I wanna say, um, that I thought you have brought a wonderful voice to our board. Um, sometimes these meetings can be a little long and dry. And when we get to your student school board uh, report, it's always a pleasure to see your energy and enthusiasm keeps us going through to the end of the meeting. Um, you always have an upbeat um, tone and outlook. And 
even when you're addressing some of the most serious topics. And I'm sure that when you uh, took on this role as a student school board rep at the beginning of the year, you never anticipated that you would be um, doing things like leading a walkout related to gun violence. So um, I'm sure it's been an interesting year and not always under the best of circumstances, but we appreciate you. And we especially look forward to seeing you roaming around Evanston as a wildcat. So congratulations on that next step for you, Emma. Really appreciate it. Jude. Emma, <laughs> it's been great sitting next to you. <laughs> um, right away I realized that you were going to be such an advocate for student voice and that you were gonna be courageous enough to say what needed to be said when it needed to be said. Thank you for that. Your professional and pleasant demeanor will open the door. You, you're, you're, you're so sharp, but that pleasant demeanor and the way you carry yourself professionally will open doors for you. And thank you so much for what you've added to this board. So I always have to speak last, and, and, and the words of, of my colleagues have been, um, been very sincere, and I agree with everything that's been said. You've been an excellent student representative. I've always felt bad for Dr. Witherspoon, who has to go after you. It's impossible. <laughs> I know. I, you know. <laughs> you, you, um, your, your reports and, and, and your positions are, are always so valuable, and I felt like um, there were times when you were holding us accountable and challenging us in a pleasant but real way. Um, and the times that you were in support of what we were doing really affirmed where we were. And for me, I felt good about that because I know that, that your support doesn't come easily, that you really are thinking through issues. You were um, well-informed, well-researched, you thought about what you were gonna say and how you said it, um, always, uh, even as you participated on this board. So um, very professional, very adult-like. Um, and then sometimes I would forget that you're managing a school load, a full school load. And um, I think only a couple of times, once maybe you said you had to stay home and study. Um, but you've just been You've been great, and I really appreciate you. I'm excited for you for your future, and look forward to seeing you or seeing your, your family in the community and catching up. Um, so good luck to you. I wish you the best, Emma. You, you really have so much to offer our society. I just feel really good about your experience here and what you're taking with you from that experience. So thank you, thank you for for holding us accountable and being a part, a real part of this board. So thank you. Good luck. So. All right. So at this time, uh, we're gonna do the oath for the incoming student rep. So if Phoebe would join me at the podium. Uh, Dr. Bavis, Wait before you do we that, there's, to give Emma. there's one more piece. <laughs> Emma. Does she have to go around? Or no, I'll walk. You got to uh, <laughs> go Yeah. Yeah. Aww. yeah. Aww. <laughs> Make sure she gets a pin. So we're going to do the oath of office. Uh, 
So you're going to repeat after me. Raise your right hand. I, state your name. I, Phoebe Licardo. A student member of the Board of Education. A student member of the Board of Education. Of Evanston Township High School. Of Evanston Township High School. District 202. District 202. County of Cook. County of Cook. Illinois. Illinois. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of the United States. To support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And the Constitution of the State of Illinois. And faithfully discharge the duties. And faithfully discharge the duties. Of the office. Of the office. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs> Phoebe, welcome yes. to the board. Would you put your name tag a little bit further out so oh. we can? <laughs> I just wanted her to be able to see it first. <laughs> <laughs> well, your mom needs to take a picture of it, so we want to make sure it's there. Well, welcome to the board. Thank you so much. Yeah, we look forward to some really good work together. Thank you. Yes. All right. So we go on. Oh, that's right. It's me. Okay. <laughs> I lost my agenda at one point. Okay. So we are at item number 16, and that's the approval of resolution providing for the issue of, of not to exceed $6 million general obligation limited tax bonds series 2018 of the district for the purpose of increasing the working cash fund. Move approval. Second. Second. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Thank you. So the next item is approval and ratification of settlement agreement and release of all claims and liabilities dated April 13th, 2018, related to a student matter. So moved. Second. Roll call, please. Yes. Livingston? Yes. 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 The next item is the consent agenda, which consists of approval of intergovernmental agreement between the city of Evanston and Evanston Township High School 202 regarding the affordable housing agreement, approval of press policy issue number 97 and policy 7.315, approval of summer painting bids, projects bids, approval of summer carpet projects bids, approval of bike compound bid, approval of minutes, dated April 9th, 2018, the closed session minutes, and approval of April 9th, 2018, regular meeting minutes. Approval of bills, which consists, oh, I'm sorry. Approval of bills, personnel agenda, which consists of appointments to staff, certified support staff, safety, summer school, change in status, which consists of compensation, overloads, stipend, and resignation of exempt and coaches, retirement, certified safety, release of support staff. And then there's an addendum. I'm going to just read some of the items on the addendum. Uh, the addendum items include appointment to staff, certified change in status, notice to remedy, and resolution. Move approval. Second. Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Parsons. Yes. Long. Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, so we are at old and new business. Is there old or new business? 
I just want to say that I went to, um, and actually Gretchen was there as well, a couple of items. Yes, two, uh, two, two events last weekend. Uh, one was the Franzic Radelic Law Conference, and I think you all have a binder that, um, that I brought you back. There's, an, there's a session on school boards, um, how school boards function, and it was, a, it was creatively presented. I, I'll say that. It was very creative, very catchy. Um, so that was good. And then there was an equity event sponsored by the Illinois uh, School Board Association on Saturday in Lyle. Um, and I was at that as well as Gretchen. I was, I presented, I was on a panel uh, representing our district. So if there's no other, uh, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I thought you might be. <laughs> Thank you. We are adjourned at what time? Nine is it? fifteen. Nine fifteen. Okay, I didn't make the nine o'clock, but <laughs>